I got this picture in my text chain last week. Um, Bryson's school takes pictures of their show and tell and sends them to their parents. Um, well, this one was especially meaningful to me because I love books. You've probably noticed that. And I really want Bryson to share that love, so I'm always on the lookout for a good book. And when I find it, I buy it, and I take it up to them. We have a wonderful chance to read it together. Well, the show and tell series that they're doing is based on letters of the alphabet. And so for the last couple of weeks, he's taken in books that I gave him to share. And so not only have we had the fun of sharing it, but every time he takes one to school, then the teacher reads that book and she gets him to help. And he absolutely loves it because he has something then to share with all of his friends and, and classmates. Well, I brought my own show and tell this morning. Um, several years ago, pre-COVID, I went to see Grace Hall, and it's just such a God thing that you are here this morning. I bet you don't remember this, or maybe you do. Um, but as I walked into your house, I saw a beautiful plant. It had lit, beautiful, bright green foliage on it, little tiny white leaves, and I remarked on it, and you quickly went and you dug up some, and you put it in this, and I said, I'll, I'll give this back to you. And she said, oh, no, I keep those on hand so that I have something to share. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. I want you to know it's still alive. <laughs> and it has been sitting outside. It looks better than this in the summer, but it's still alive. Just want you to know that. <laughs> That's a precious gift, and it reminds me of it every time that I see you. Um, but your gift reminded me of the legend of the bucket. And maybe you've heard it, and I want to share that with you today. There was once a man, a wise man, who carried a, a bucket everywhere he went. And when he stopped at the homes of others or when he pulled, when he stepped into businesses or when he went into the marketplace, he seemed to pull out of that bucket the very thing that they needed. Sometimes it was tangible things, bread, a few coins, tools to help make or repair. Sometimes it was a wise word of counsel or an encouraging story. No matter what situation he walked into, there always seemed to be something in the bucket to make a difference in the lives of others. <laughs> His neighbor, a little bit on the stingy side, watching all of this somewhat enviously, noticed one day that the bucket had been left sitting by the doorpost. Scurrying over, really not thinking too much about it before he did it, his curiosity got the best of him and he picked up the bucket and he ran back to his house, eager to discover its secrets. He watched a little guiltily as the neighbor came out of the house and reached for the bucket and didn't find it. Hmm. But to his dismay, when he looked into the bucket, it was empty. <laughs> he watched as empty-handed. His neighbor headed off down off in, on his journeys anyway, stopping here and there as was his custom, leaving behind him the same trail of joy. Several days passed and the wise man continued his journeys as if nothing had happened. And meanwhile, that empty bucket <laughs> set over in the corner of the neighbor's house, a guilty reminder of his theft until one day he just couldn't stand it anymore and he grabbed the bucket and seeing his neighbor come out of the house, he ran over and confessed that he had stolen the bucket because he was hoping to discover how it was that this wise man always had just the right thing to give. Well, the wise man smiled and asked, and did you discover it? <laughs> and the neighbor said, no, it was empty, I don't understand. The wise man laughed and in invited him to join him on his journeys that day. And he said, bring the bucket. Stopping at the first house, the great need there was for wise counsel. As they sat and talked, the wise man turned to the, his neighbor and invited him to reach into the bucket where, wonder of wonders, the neighbor found a few wise words to share. An encouraging story, a bit of counsel. And at the next home, material needs seemed to permeate the entire place. It was obvious 
that need existed in every single corner of that home. At the nod of the wise man, the neighbor reached into the bucket and found a few coins to offer. In fact, everywhere he went, to his great surprise, he found something in the bucket that he could give. He took careful note of what happened in those places they visited, the joy as a gift was given, joy that seemed to take up residence in his own heart. (laughs) Arriving home that evening, he handed the bucket back to the wise man, and the wise man asked, did you discover the secret of the bucket? The neighbor thought for a moment and then slowly said, I think so. The secret's not in the bucket, but in our willingness to share what we carry. And what happens as we share those things, the wise man prodded. Joy in all those places and in you. joy. The wise man laughed and handed him the bucket and said, it's now yours. Carry it wherever you go. Well, that's the legend of the bucket. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 11 explains how that works in our lives. God's promises that will be made rich in every way so that we can be generous on every occasion and that through us that generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. But you say this passage is about stealing. Yes, it is. (laughs) Both Malachi 3 and this verse in Ephesians refer to the same thing. In Malachi, God is angry because the people aren't bringing the things in their bucket, tithes and offerings. It is not that he needs those things. Do you know he owns the cattle on a thousand hills? This is a given. But those tithes, they were to be used to build up the ministry at the temple, to provide priests, to teach the word, to offer healing, to pronounce forgiveness, to decide legal cases justly, all of which pointed to the majesty, the justice and the awe of our incredible God. Likewise, the offerings that were to be collected every three years were to be taken into the storehouses so that every single person could be taken care of. No one was to be left without something that they needed from the foreigners among them to the widows and the orphans because to leave somebody uncared for was a poor reflection on God's ability to provide. His resources are endless unless they're not offered for his use. In Ephesians, Paul writes about that same issue, this community of faith, this church, he writes, is to be built up as each one does his part, as each one shares what's in his bucket. As a people of God, we've been given much to share, haven't we? prayers. I'm grateful that we have a place to take those together. We've been given spiritual gifts and talents that are to be shared. Can you share those if you're not present? Time, the ability to serve, stories of what God has done in our lives, wisdom and counsel from the scripture. Each of you has something powerful and life-giving to share. It's not because we have to share that we do it, but because we can. This morning I heard the story of an old man who carried a bucket down to the pier on the eastern seacoast of Florida every Friday night. The bucket was full of shrimp. The seagulls flocked to the old man as he'd feed them from the bucket. Somebody asked him one day, why would you do that? 
And so he told them a story. Some of you have heard it. I can see the smiles on your faces. He was part of a flying team, those that flew a, a B-17 flying fortress, isn't that what it's called? Over the waters. And somewhere down in the South Pacific, he and his team became lost beyond the reach of the radio. Fuel ran dangerously low, so the men ditched their plane in the ocean, and for nearly a month, he and his companions fought the water, the weather, and the scorching sun. They spent many sleepless nights recoiling as giant sharks ran their, their raft, and the largest raft was nine by five. The biggest shark was ten feet long. But of all their enemies at sea, the one that proved the most formidable was starvation. Eight days out, the rations long gone or destroyed by salt water, knowing that it would take a miracle to sustain them. The pilot read the service that afternoon and finished with a prayer for deliverance and a hymn of praise. And the writer of it said, then I dozed off, but something landed on my head. <laughs> I knew it was a seagull. He said, I don't know how I knew, I just knew. Everyone else knew too. No one said a word, but peering out from under my hat brim without moving my head, I could see the expression on their faces. They were staring at the goal because the goal meant food. If I could catch it, I caught it. They ate its flesh and they used its intestines as bait to catch fish. And their hopes were renewed because of one lone seagull, uncharacteristically hundreds of miles from land, imagine that, just at the time that they needed it. And that gall offered itself as a sacrifice. In gratitude, every Friday evening about sunset, Eddie Rickenbacker fed the seagulls. In gratitude for the one that gave its life that he might live. Church, can we do anything less for this one who gave his life that we might live? Amen. Amen. Sometimes we not only forget what he has done, but we forget that we have something to share. And we just set our buckets over in the corner, sure that they're empty, but it's as we pick them up and share what God has given us, that we discover afresh the wealth that's really there. We steal when we don't share what we've been given. The community is robbed of things that it needs for the common good. We're robbed of the joy of giving, and God is robbed of the opportunity not only to bless others, but to bless us. As we come up to this season of Lent, it's a time of introspection, a time when we contemplate what the Lord has done for us and where we are in relationship with him. A time to contemplate, if you will, what's in the bucket. And an even greater question, how are you to give it and to whom? Would you pray with me? Lord, there's no way to say thank you for what you have given to us. The only, only way we can say thank you is to live out in gratitude what you have given. So I pray for this congregation as I look around, I see amazing gifts, I see gifts of service, I see gifts of time, amazing talents. I see those who think they have nothing to give when you poured so much into them. Help them, Lord. Show them what's in that bucket. I see gifts of wisdom, of knowledge, of faith. And those things are meant to be shared with the body of Christ so that we are not left without and so that your name is glorified. And so, fathers, we come to this time of this Holy Lent would you remind us what's in that bucket and what's in us? 
We ask these things in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Let the church say.